Hello guys. So I have been making a habit of having a few big days out um, running or just by myself and I've been asked what I pack when I bring with me and it's pretty simple. It's kind of been based off of the mandatory gear lists that a lot of running races have and I guess it's what has slightly evolved from that. It's very event dependent but Today I am packing for the Eco Trail Wicklow, um, so I thought I'd run through what I have on the ground, what I'm bringing with me, what I'm using for this one and why. Just really quickly kind of run through what I pack for a big day out. Running by myself, you know, having fun. Okay, so I've got split into a couple of piles and it's pretty simple. Um, first off in Ireland, your rain protection. So here I have two different jackets and a pair of waterproof pants. Personally, I have not yet had to run in waterproof pants, but I see these as a requirement for really long races, kind of over the marathon length. And I pack them when I'm doing like middle of winter kind of stuff. Jackets, um, I have two options. I have a very lightweight, the yellow one's quite light. The other one is one of the Columbia Titanium jackets, very heavy, also bulkier, so harder to pack into the running vest or bag or whatever I have with me. So this will depend on how likely it is to rain. If I know it's going to be wet, wet, I'll wear the Columbia. If not, I will go with the lighter yellow jacket and it's not failed me yet. Similarly, I typically have a buff and a hat of some description or even this level of hat if it's January. Um, these are typically on a mandatory kit list. Sometimes when they say a hat, they'll accept a buff, something to keep your head warm. And sometimes gloves are also mandatory. I have only used run uh, <laughs> gloves on runs in winter as well. Um, so when I went out to do the Leitrim Way in a day, I didn't pack a pair of gloves. I didn't think it was going to be that cold. It wasn't really right for the occasion. This middle line here is the kind of health and safety. So. You're gonna need to know where you're going and this can like vary if you're just going for a 10k loop around what you around somewhere you've already run before you don't necessarily need a map but if i'm going off on a trail that i've never done before or it's for a race i typically have a gpx file loaded into my watch so i can have a, a map going on my wrist but i'll also have um photocopy laminates of physical maps so these can fold down really small. I'll have things marked in on top, like I'll draw with marker, things that I want to like either place them in a stop or things that'll help me like figure out where I am if I get lost. So to go along with this, like if I'm putting out the, the physical map, things are, are uh, not going as planned. But then to go along with that, I have a compass. Um, it's pretty simple, you figure out which way, if you're going north or south, you set up the compass and you follow it. Um, so that would be typically in with the map. And then the other kind of real safety precaution that I have not yet had to use and hope I never have to use is a foil blanket or a like bivy bag, a thermal bag. So again, this is only for kind of winter, night super long races where I've got the thermal bag which is like a foil blanket except it's like a sleeping bag shape um, so this is what I've used for um, the Kerryway Ultra Light I also had it on the Kerryway Ultra Night this year and I had it for the Art O'Neill um, in case anything really bad happens I need to be able to warm myself up for less uh, intense days out or for kind of my own adventures where I didn't think I'd need something quite as big I have just a standard foil blanket. This is what I had for the Leitrim Way and for the Gadget Crossing, I think that was also a requirement. So those are kind of my, uh, if things get wet and cold. And then this is my first aid kit. So in here I have a couple of plasters, I have a couple of um, larger bandages and I have K-tape. Kinesiology? Kinesis kinesiology tape, I think that's what it's called. Um, this stuff is great for um, 
sticking stuff closed, <laughs> basically. Um, I've used it on my feet, uh, mostly. Um, or if I've had some really bad uh, chafing, I've used it on top of that. Now, ripping it off afterwards is... But the whole point is to be able to get out of whatever situation I'm in. So that is my first aid kit. Um, it's a bit more than I know some ultra runners bring, but I guess what's really important for me is that I'm not that fast. So when I'm considering going out for a 60K a day, I know I'm gonna be out for way longer than some of the, the guys who are out winning the races. So if you're only gonna be out for two or three hours, you're not gonna need as much as me who might be out for six or 12 hours. Um, so it's all about kind of assessing what you're doing and how much you're gonna need for it. Similarly, I have a head torch. Um, if I think it's gonna either run late in the summer or if it's in the winter, <laughs> you kind of always need a head torch. I have the Loud Lenser Neo 6, which is kind of my everyday training one. I recently got a Petzl one, which has a much more intense light, but it doesn't last as long. Um, I'm still experimenting with head torches. Um, thankfully, I've never got stuck, um, but they are a game changer in Ireland. You have to have a head torch. And finally, I always have a battery bank. And then I typically have a cable for my phone and for my watch. Um, I have needed to use the battery bank on more than one run, um, either to charge up my phone or to just give my watch a bit of a top up so that it definitely gets to the end. Um, I typically go for a, like a minimum of a 5,000 milliamp hour, um, but something around 10 is typically better. If you can get it small and lightweight, that's the goal. Um, so that I'm always able to either call and get myself out or, you know, just a really nice backup to have. So that's the kind of safety stuff. Over here, I can carry up to about three litres of water. And for me, I definitely never need more. Um, so that goes in the back of my running vest and in the front two pockets. Oh, I still have something in here. It's going to be painkillers. Yes. The painkillers don't come out of the bag. <laughs> um, those are a final part of the, the safety rundown. Um, yeah, so this is my current running vest, um, or one of my two running vests. It is the Osprey uh, Dyna 6. So it's a six litre running vest. The other one I have is the Druro 1.5. Um, so this is a unisex fit and this is the women's fish, so it's a bit smaller. For me, even though this is a 1.5 litre, I've been able to fit so much stuff into it because it's slightly big on me. Like I have a lot of the, the straps cinched as, as small as they go. So that means that the pockets have more room to kind of expand. Um, this has done loads and loads, but I wanted something that I could more comfortably stuff an extra few things into, which is why I've gone up for this one. And the fish personally for me is that bit better. Um, in the women's fish. So in the back, in here is typically where I put my water bladder. I would then put my kind of first aid, so like the foil blanket or the thermal bag and the waterproof trousers and stuff in the very, very bottom because I'm hoping I'm never going to need those. Um, working my way up then, I would have maybe, if I'm starting off as nice and sunny, I'd have my rain jacket, um, my hat, my gloves might also be in the bottom if it's winter or if it's mandatory and I'm hoping not to need it. In like the outer pocket is where I would have the painkillers, the battery bank and my cables and they're the very kind of wedged in behind at the very top with my water bladder would be my maps and my compass. Um, so like ideally for me I am not opening the back of this bag too much. Um, in the stretchy bit might be where I put my rain jacket and then in the all the other pockets are then basically dedicated to food. Food is a tricky one. So here you'll see I've just got bags of gels, millions of gels. Um, finding which one works for you is important and it's good to do before you go out for your 30, 40, 60, 100, 10K, whatever it is you're running. Um, you don't want to try them on your training runs so that they don't run through you. For me, high fives work really well. They don't disagree with my stomach and um, they give me the energy I need. If I'm going really slow, 
I can eat no problem. Like when I did the leech from the day, I did the 60K in 12 hours. And that includes me taking, I think, two and a half hours of like lunch breaks and stopping and talking to farmers and locals who were involved in the trail. That was a real kind of community day for me. So I was able to eat no problem. When I'm going faster, I'm still working at figuring out what my stomach agrees with. Currently, uh, crisps are working really well, like uh, snacks or like lentil crisps. Um, they tend to be like decent enough in calories um, for the weight of them. The only problem is that they're bulky. So I have Ziploc bags like these ones that I have, like the ones that I have the gels in that um, I stuff the crisps into and then I eat them as I go or like a Bombay mix. They're also quite calorie dense for the amount of them. Um, food and running has been a tricky one for me. Um, so I'm still working on that. Also, the good thing about crisps and stuff is that it really encourages me to drink. Um, I also find it kind of difficult to drink enough water as I'm going. So crisps and Bombay mix and stuff give me that urge to drink. And in the food pile, I also have electrolytes. Um, so these replace some of the salts and stuff that you lose, uh, especially on big sweaty days. Um, electrolytes are great. I s still go for the high five ones just because they were the first ones I tried and they've agreed with me. And I've heard some horror stories of ones that didn't agree with other people. So yeah, uh, I think the only thing I'm missing from here is kind of the clothes I would be wearing. So I have running socks, shorts, t-shirt, and then I would sometimes have a really light merino um, kind of mid layer or a long sleeve base layer. And that would be my extra uh, layer that I would wear. It, like if it's cold, I don't want to be wearing a rain jacket. Um, that would be what I'd have on top. So I have a light blue, purpley merino layer, or I have um, a long sleeve Helly Hansen base layer that I got from doing the Ash O'Neill in January. So those are the two that I typically go for for that. For this again, for the Eco Trail, the gloves are not necessary. They'll be staying at home. Um, the hat and buff are coming. The rain pants are not necessary and I'm doing the 30K course. So I don't think I'm going to feel the need to pack them in general. They can also stay. I'm expecting to only need the light rain jacket, but being Ireland, I'm gonna pack both. Definitely gonna bring the running vest. Oh, it also has a built-in whistle. Um, so that will also go in. I'll bring all my water. I'm still not great at finishing my water, but it's better to have it all with you, so. For this, I'm going to have the foil blanket and I'm going to have the compass in it. I am not going to have a printed off map. I'm just going to have the GPX on my watch. Um, because it's a race during the day with lots of people, I don't think I need a physical map. It's a marked course. Um, yeah, it's not. And just, there's going to be people there. So a physical map is not going to be necessary. This is the one from the Art O'Neill um, as an example. So in that goes. Yeah, so this thermal bag is staying at home, full blanket is coming. Um, first aid mini kit is coming, head torch is staying at home, painkillers are coming, battery bank is coming with me, sun cream is coming with me, and all of the food options are coming. I'll probably buy one or two more non-jelly things. Um, I'm not really sure how long the eco trail is going to take me. Um, probably several hours. I'm going out for a fun day and a slow day. Um, I want to just have some nice time in the hills. And I know lots of people who are doing different races there. So it's going to just be a bit of a catch up. Um, so that means I'm going to need the food. So let's have a look at the actual uh, gear list to make sure that I've actually remembered everything. So minimum uh, half a litre of water. Yep. Yeah. Food. Yep. Yeah. Personal cup or bottle. Yep. Yeah. Phone, yes, fully charged phone. Um, ID, rain jacket, yes, foil blanket, cap buff, yes. Um, you need to bring along a pen so that you can fill in your medical details in the back of your bib. Um, yes, have my hat. My first aid kit also isn't necessary, but because it's something I always pack, I might as well have it there. Um, yeah, looks like I got everything right. Um, are there other things that you pack typically? Um, I guess I might also pack some earphones. Um, yeah, that's what I've used for 
any big days and whether it's running or hiking in the hills it's kind of similar it's always enough layers enough water food and the safety of a mini first aid kit map and compass gps whatever kind of way faring method i have if you want to stay safe and have a, a great time in the hills just a little bit of planning a little bit of thinking of what you might need and yeah so yeah i hope you enjoyed this really quick run through and uh i'll see you in our next video thank you so much to our patrons who make all these videos possible um it's a lot it's with your support that we can do these kind of things and have so many fun adventures so this week i'd like to say a special thank you to andrew moore to ian breen and to pauline boris um yeah cool okay bye Here we go!